what's up guys my name is tech number here for troubleshoot and today we'll be going through installing and setting up rust io integration on your rust server so what is rust io well it gives you an option to give your players a link to a website where they can go and view a live map of the map in game from basically anywhere you can get it to link with the clans plugin so they can see their friends etc etc and it's really good for a promoting your server and b letting people find easy ways around your map as well as some other things like pvp hotspots so with all of that cool explanation aside, let's get ahead into the actual video itself. So what will you need? Well, first of all, you'll need a way to connect to your server via Archon and send commands and receive them back and forth, which is exactly what this is. It gives me console access where I can enter commands and they'll run on the server. That being said, there's a link down below to tutorial on setting up and getting this Archon window to work. Next up, we'll need a way of transferring files back and forth between your server and your local computer. Obviously, if you're hosting the server off your local computer, you won't need extra software. However, if you're hosting it with someone such as game servers, you'll need a piece of software called FileZilla. Once you connect to your server and get it set up properly, you basically explore the files of the server on the right-hand side, and your computer files are on the left, where you can drag them back and forth. That also being said, there's a link in the description down below on how to set this up and get it working. You'll need both of these set up and working if you're using something like game servers to host your servers. Obviously, any other host would also apply. So to begin, let's actually start and download the plugin. So as you can see on the actual UMod page, there is no download link for Rust.io. So how exactly would you go about and add this plugin? Well, you can actually find it off of their website, which will be linked down below. Playrust.io slash manual, etc, etc. Down here by installation, you'll see exactly what you need to do. So you'll need to run UMod, which you've already set up. If you need an explanation on that, they'll also be linked down below. You'll need to allow it through the firewall, etc, etc. But if you're running a server, you've probably already done that. Next up, you'll need to download Rust.io and place the downloaded Oxide ext rustio.dll in your managed folder. So let's go ahead and click that link to download it. Keep and as you can see, we've downloaded a DLL file. Basically, opening up your FileZilla or moving it into the folder itself, we'll navigate into Rust Dedicated Data, followed by Managed. And inside of here, we have a bunch of DLLs. As you can see, we have Oxide set up over here. And there's all the DLLs related to it. Basically, what you'd be doing is you'd be dragging it from your browser or the folder itself into the server's Managed folder. However, if you're using someone like game servers, they may have an option to install it directly on their website where it will automatically restart the server and the rest for you. However, if you're not using game servers, you can skip ahead a bit in this video. All you need to do really is save your server, close it and restart it from this point to get that working. Then we'll get into config just after that. That being said, if you're using someone like game servers like I am, all you need to do is head across to the mods button next to the listing of the server and you'll need to look for Rust IO, install the latest version of Rust IO and all you need to do is simply hit install. That'll begin the process that I just explained where it downloads that DLL, puts it in the managed folder and then restarts your server. If I hit OK, you'll notice that the server is now offline. It says it's locked and it'll restart. Referring back to the folder over here, you can see that we're still connected to the virtual machine itself. However, if we look inside of the console, you can see it's lost connection. So it's currently installing and restarting the server. If we were to refresh this folder over here, would probably find oxide.ext.rustio.dll inside of here. And that is basically the plugin installing itself. So we'll simply wait for the server to come back online and then we'll get into actually configuring it. And there we go. Now that we're reconnected back to the server, as you can see connected, running a command like env.time tells us the time on the server. And as you can see, the server is up and running. Looking inside of the folder again, refresh, there's still that ext rustio.dll, which is great. So if we go back a folder, back another folder, we'll see this over here. We'll go into oxide, followed by config, and inside of here, you see rustio.json. What we're gonna do is we're gonna download it to our PC by simply copying it across and opening it up with something like Notepad. Obviously, if you're not using game servers or another company, you can simply just right click and open the file inside of Notepad itself without having to copy it anywhere else. As you can see, this is what it looks like. It's already made an API key for us up at the top over here. So that's great. It's all working as it should be. So obviously I'm going to have to blur out that API key, but basically everything is already set up. You can change the chat message over here that tells people that they can visit the website and type in the server's name. So checking back 
to this informational page, you can see that you can access the map at your server IP, colon, your server port on the internet. So let's go ahead and try that. Obviously, if you're using something like game servers, you won't be able to Google what is my IP and copy and paste it in there. You'll need to actually check the game server's website. So I'll go across to info. You can see the IP up here, followed by the port. That's what we'll need to copy. Then we'll simply paste it into our browser and hit enter. And as you can see, the name of the top has now corrected itself and we've actually connected to the server itself. You can now see the map and a bunch of other information. Obviously, Chrome is blocked in adverts, so I'll just allow that. And you can see the map over here with all of the little points. You can hover over, etc., etc. It's pretty useful. So obviously, this shows you things that the normal in-game map doesn't show you, such as little caves, transformers, etc, etc. And it's really useful. That being said, you can also access this in a different place. If we go ahead to playrust.io or we click this up at the top here, we can go ahead and visit this whole listing over here and type in the server's name and it'll show up on the list. All we need to do is simply click on it and we're now inspecting the map via the actual website itself. So obviously you'd preferably link people to this one, playrust.io slash map slash question mark the IP and port of your server instead of linking them directly to your server just because it looks a lot better when they're actually visiting it they know what they're going to. If you were to link someone just a group of numbers like this, they may think it's a little bit sketchy and not click on it. However, if you link them playrust.io slash map slash question mark followed by those sketchy numbers, then they may be more persuaded to actually click on it. So anyways, we've now successfully set it up and that's about it. You can go ahead and close out of everything and we're done with installing it. This was simply just a crash course on getting it to work and what exactly it does. My name's been Technoba here for Troubleshoot. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next time. Ciao.